It's pretty clear the 4680s have not really lived up to their hype. They first launched in the all-wheel drive Model Y, and the range was okay. Charging curve wasn't great, but there's fairly little battery degradation to report on, which is good. But of course, Tesla's still using the 4680s in the Cybertruck as well, and they tried their best. They still made an incredibly efficient pickup truck, pretty much the most efficient pickup of all time. Assuming you get the uglier tires with your long-range dual-motor Cybertruck, they're estimating that with current 4680 cell energy density, they can get about 340 miles of range, estimated by the EPA. I'm sure if you did a highway range test, it's probably more like 300 or 290. But we can't even verify that yet because they haven't delivered any Cybertrucks with those uglier tires, which are supposed to get far better range, far better efficiency. But they're saying that configuration can get about 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is just a little bit better than what we've seen on Rivian and the Silverado. Still an accomplishment and still quite cool, however, certainly a big disappointment from a lot of the people who originally reserved the Cybertruck because that big number was on everybody's minds. 500 plus miles of range. In fact, that's even what Tesla's website said for most of the four years waiting until Cybertruck deliveries began, up to 500 miles of range. And Drew Baglino mentioned in his interview with Sandy Monroe that that is still their internal target, as in they want to keep increasing the energy density of 4680 cells until they can get over 500 miles of range in a Cybertruck. The compromise that we haven't talked too much about in recent history is this whole range extender concept. So if you do have the pleasure of completing your configuration of the Cybertruck, they do ask you at checkout if you're interested in reserving one of the range extenders. It's a $500 non-refundable deposit. Big commitment here. They're asking for 500 bucks that you can't get back. And then the range extender, once it eventually comes out, has an S estimated price point of $16,000. And assuming you get the ugly tires with your dual motor Cybertruck, that's supposed to push you up to 470 miles of range. Okay, pretty cool. Pretty much undefeated range in the electric truck space, but it comes at the compromise of taking up a third of your bed. And that's kind of where it has to be mounted. I'm sorry, they can't stretch out the batteries to be more flat on the bed because of weight distribution. Batteries are very, very heavy. And knowing the efficiency of the Cybertruck, the range extender is not going to be lightweight. Knowing that there's about 123 kilowatt hours in the dual motor to boost it an extra 130 miles, that's probably going to be easily a 40 to 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is pretty much the same battery pack you find in the rear wheel drive Model 3, just now condensed down into like a toolbox style shape that they're going to install themselves. You have to bring your Cybertruck to a service center and they have to install it. And I'm willing to predict that this range extender is just not really going to make it. Tesla changes their mind all the time, which is both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, Tesla will not stick to something for too long if they discover that it's not worth having. If they find a better way to do something, or if they find a newer way to implement something that's cheaper or more scalable or more practical by any means, they'll just go, yep, you know what? I know we talked about offering that earlier, but let's just scrap that because it just doesn't make sense anymore. Same thing has happened with the Cybertruck, right? We didn't get the tailgate ramp. We didn't get our bench seat in the first row. We we didn't get storage areas in the sales of the Cybertruck. All kinds of things that Tesla is constantly realizing, oh, you know what? Actually, that doesn't make too much sense. And I think the range extender is very likely to be one of those big things for the Cybertruck. Not trying to say that they're going to keep your $500 deposit if you did reserve the range extender. I'm sure if they end up canceling it, they should refund you, but I would still be hesitant to believe them on that. First of all, it's going to be fairly complicated to manufacture because you're going to have to divert a fairly substantial amount of 40 680 cells just so you can manufacture range extenders. And I also don't think they're going to be as helpful as Tesla is claiming they're going to be. I think this will be Tesla's version of the Rivian Max Pack, which is basically, it looks good on paper, but in real world applications, it's actually not that much better. We've been seeing that more and more people who use the Rivian Max Pack go, hey, this isn't really getting me that much more range and the charging curve isn't that much different from the large pack. So you're better off just saving the $10,000. And I think similar to the range extender, there's a lot of questions that have been unanswered, which definitely will affect the usability. I don't think it's going to be as plug and play as the service center, which has to lift this over 1,000 pound weight into the bed of your truck. Probably has to take out a bunch of the bed and plug in high voltage wiring, and that's just the start of it. Okay, let's assume you just had your range extender installed, you charge your truck up to 100% right before a big road trip, and then you drive it almost till empty, and guess what? Now you've got 
two different battery packs that you're managing. You have a buffer on the range extender, as in like you probably don't want to bring the range extender all the way up to 100% for degradation reasons, and you also don't want to complete it all the way down to zero. That's not good for the cells either. And then the next problem is once you eventually do start fast charging your Cybertruck, which already has proven to not have too great of a charging curve, now you've got two separate batteries to worry about. So that's another question I have for Tesla surrounding the range extender. Does it have its own separate battery preconditioning technology? Or is there actually going to not just be high voltage wiring hookups into your bed, but also coolant tubes hooking up? So now you have to precondition the battery for fast charging that's in the floor of the Cybertruck and for the range extender in the bed. And I don't think these cells are that close to each other. So I don't think it's going to be that simple to heat the battery for fast charging or cool the battery when it's hot out, which means that the main Cybertruck battery will have a certain charging curve and then the range extender will have probably a separate charging curve and my guess is it will not be that good because it's a smaller battery pack which means if you want to put 350 kilowatts into that 50 kilowatt hour pack that's six or seven c you know that would be seven times the battery packs worth going into it all at once so it probably has a slower charging curve and the battery management system is going to be very very complicated now making sure that both batteries have to be maintained for good cycle life and fast charging and i think that will ultimately result in the amount of time that you spend at a supercharger with the range extender being far longer than if you just had your one singular battery pack in the floor. So not only is it going to be problematic to ship these massive range extenders around to service centers, service centers are going to have to lift them up and then tear apart your bed on the inside of the Cybertruck to plug everything in, but also I don't think it's as simple as, okay, my range is now 470 miles. We know that with highway range, you don't get those numbers anyway, so it's very likely going to be more like 400 miles miles, maybe 420 if you're doing actual highway driving. And then of course the main reason people want more range is for towing, right? So if you're towing your Cybertruck with the range extender, this isn't actually an advantage of 130 miles. It's probably more of an advantage of 60 miles that's costing you $16,000. And sure, that allows you to go a little bit further while towing, but if you're stuck at the supercharger for more like an hour, an hour and a half, because you've got two separate charging curves and two different batteries to precondition, then that doesn't genuinely translate to that much better of a travel time. Like, yeah, your first leg of the trip may last longer, but then from that point on, you know, there's going to be other cyber trucks without the range extender that can just pop in, charge really quick and pop out, and they may actually travel faster. I think that's going to be the realization Tesla comes to, and just for the sake of the delivery event and the announcements, they decided, hey, let's just say that we're eventually going to offer a range extender. The website is still claiming that it'll be available late this year. Tesla has been been very late with their timelines, particularly surrounding the Cybertruck before. Like, what the heck happened to the Cyberquad? They're just not talking about it anymore. I guess the Cyberquad doesn't exist. So, for the same reason, the Cyberquad and the tailgate ramp and the six-seater option didn't really end up happening. I'm not going to be surprised if down the road, one day we wake up and the range extender just mysteriously goes missing from the website. A handful of Twitter accounts are spamming Elon about it, and he eventually says, eh, we decided it didn't need that. And before you say, well, Drew, it's different. They actually took payments. They took deposits for this trim. They're taking people's money for this accessory. Well, they did the same thing for the Plaid Plus Model S, and Tesla never made that either, right? There's been several points where Tesla has taken money promising a higher range model is coming later, and then eventually ended up scrapping it. And I do think that Tesla's probably going to work harder on increasing the energy density of the 4680 cells. Within about a year of production with the Model Y, they found a 10% unlock that they did for the cyber cells. So if we get another 10% range unlock, I suppose that could push the dual motor cyber truck to about 370 miles of range. I mean, not the 500 we're all hoping for, but still better. But ultimately, I think the more you road trip with an EV, even if you're towing around with it, I think you'll start to realize that the charging curve and the charger infrastructure matters a lot more than the 100% EPA estimated range number. Even if Tesla did somehow cram a bunch of extra 4680 cells in the cyber truck, truck through better storage techniques, you're still probably not going to go 500 miles between charges. Even when towing, it's still probably going to be more like 200 miles, and then all that extra money you spent on a bigger battery pack isn't going to be justified. However, if Tesla is just looking for more raw space in the Cybertruck to fit more 4680 cells, and, you know, the range extender concept is basically just, eh, just throw them in the bed while you're at it, I would actually suggest a redesign to the tonneau cover, which does look really cool. I love that it's well integrated and that it just rolls up and disappears. However, I do think that roll in 
inside the Cybertruck is taking up precious space because it's centrally located. It's right behind that second row and you could probably fill that up with a bunch of 4680 cells if Tesla came up with a more boring traditional kind of manual tonneau cover. And I bet some people would be willing to put up with that. Just like how Tesla's assuming some people are going to be comfortable with a giant range extender in the bed sacrificing on their payload capacity and their storage space. If you cared more about range than anything, I would say take up that space that's currently occupied for the vault cover and fill that with 4680 cells and then just go forward with kind of a basic manual tonneau cover that maybe just folds straight up or has little slots like the Rivian manual tonneau cover that the user can take out if they feel like. Couple that with some 10% better cyber cells in the next year or two. I could see them surpassing 400 miles while still giving you full access to the bed, just maybe with a little bit less fancy tonneau cover. But what do you guys think Tesla should do? And before you just say the range extender is a great idea, tell me, how do you think they plan on preconditioning both the range extender and the main battery pack for fast charging and for cooling when it gets really hot out? And what do you think the charging curve is going to be like for that separate system? Do you think the range extender has built in preconditioning technology? Or is it just going to have to be the same temperature as whatever the outside is? All that stuff, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.